Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris. We are wrapping up our war with the Mythfell Obliterators and I expect we should be able to finish it within the episode. We've conquered most of the territory. Um, all that really remains is um, occupying the planets. So we have one assault army on the way to occupy these planets and we might consider building up a second army in Sismok to aid us uh, as well. Um, before we unpause the game, I just want to go ahead and attend to the situations on our different planets here, make sure we have jobs available uh, where we want the jobs to be available. Um, another thing, uh, let's do this first. Uh, Favaria, I think we're going to have any unemployed pops from Favaria just migrate to other planets before we start upgrading these buildings. We'll only start upgrading buildings once we've really run out of room on our other planets. The Sadia is doing just fine. Um, Ultan, let's see here. We have one available job, so we could probably use some more jobs here. Um, but we're fully maxed up on di districts. Hmm. Seeing as we have all these unneeded building slots, I would consider replacing a city district with an industrial district. Um, this will provide some extra jobs and reduce the building slot that we don't really need. Um, New Favaria, our tech world, we could use a couple more building slots, so let's just build a couple more city districts. On our mining world, we're doing just fine. Let's see, our agri world has zero available jobs but plenty of housing. Hmm. Yeah, we'll probably leave this world be. We have no jobs on this world either. Um, let's go ahead and build an agriculture district. Let's clear these blockers. Um, and uh, let's build another city district to unlock another building slot. We'll build some more agriculture districts. We'll build some more research labs on this world. Um, we're not going to rule this world long term so i think we're just going to leave this world be cory is doing just fine joy tandir is doing just fine forfion i think we could probably build um another couple of city districts to unlock another couple of uh, building slots um where we can build um our volatile moat harvesting traps here um and then this planet will be almost complete. We've got researchers on this planet um, from the the planetary features. This just gives us a base eight researcher jobs. Uh, we have a bunch of extractors here. We have the faculty of our chaos studies. This is a really productive planet for us. Um, and then of course we have our two you know planets on the on the border district. These are doing just fine. I think we'll go ahead and build hollow theaters here as well. All right. Uh, second thing is, is we are full up on influence. Um, now we are going to prepare to go to war with the Alliance of Hardshell Harbor next. Um, and we want to make sure that we claim all of these, these systems that we need. Um, I'm not going to claim any system that the Sander and United Planet States has already claimed because they can just get that claim directly from winning the war. So we only need to claim systems that they haven't already claimed yet. So we don't need to claim Red Ore because it is claimed by the Sandrine United Planet States. We don't need to claim Kefiltar. We don't need to claim Baltris. But we do need to claim this. Do we need to claim Onab? Uh, no, we do not. Do we need to claim Mias? Yes. Do we need to claim Uriel? Yes. It's going to cost us 640 influence. Anything else we'd like to claim? We might as well claim uh, this system as well. All right, 840 influence for this war. All right. So spending influence is going to be good. Um, we might use some influence later as well um, to buy another Elgate Insight. I think that'll cost us oh no that's not influence that's artifacts um we we can just spend our influence on more claims then um the last thing i want to do is go to sysmok go to army builder and i think we should get a second army up and running 
Um, we can merge the armies after we're done, but I'd like to start building these new psionic pops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's uh, have a nice round 10. 10 psionic armies will be great. We can, um, hopefully these are significantly stronger. Let's see. These are dealing four to eight damage and six to 12 morale damage compared to two to five damage and two to five morale damage. Oh yeah, these are way better. Okay, these psionic armies are definitely the way of the future. Fantastic. All right, we'll let these armies build up and I think we'll send these armies to some of the planets um, that are not in this direct region. All right, sounds fantastic. This fleet should already have orders. This fleet is currently bombarding this planet. What's the defense on this planet? 994 garrison? All right, it might be a little while yet before we get the chance to actually invade that planet. Let's see if there are any other invadable planets in range. Ah, this has zero garrison. Might as well take this planet. Yeah. All right, fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and before we forget to do this, Cancel I'm gonna go ahead and restrict available. all three of these systems so that we don't accidentally send our fleets through here uh, and get them killed. Fantastic. Did I hear that there's a council agenda available? Oh, we didn't finish our council agenda. I think it's just no longer on cooldown. All right, so that doesn't really affect us. Um, let's go ahead and move our Hostile army in. Station. Is there anything in this system that we need to take? I know I was waiting for Panic Sala to take it, but we might as well just take it for ourselves. Um, because they're taking forever and I want to end this war. Yeah, let's move into Iversine. And let's conquer this planet, Trast. Fantastic. All right. Great, we've conquered all of these systems Council and we're about to conquer ready. the last system here. Council agenda is ready. What happened? I thought it was ready. Is it no longer ready? Maybe we need to wait for the month to take over. There we go. Um, let's see what we can take as our next agenda. Hmm. Planetary invasion begun. Probably stability, yeah. Let's get extra stability because we're about to, you know, occupy a whole bunch of new planets right now, so increasing the stability will be really useful for us. All right. Once we conquer this system, I think we'll move in our new army to take um, control of this planet. They have one, two, three, four defense armies. I think we can handle four defense armies. All right. Let's wait for a little more than four um, armies to go and invade that planet. And um, fantastic. Now that we've taken the system, Let's go and um, repair in the Lurus system. And I think we will head over to this system and help bombard. Because they still have 906 garrison on this planet. I don't think they're going to be able to take that anytime soon. We're going to need to help them out with the bombarding. Um, how are we doing on bombarding this world, by the way? We brought the garrison down to 42. Okay, fantastic. Let's go in and um, let's land our armies and conquer that planet. We can move our fleet to start bombarding um, Nest. I think this is the fleet we want. Yes. Okay, we're gonna start bombarding Nest. And let's see what the garrison on here is like. 926, okay, so it might be a little while before we can invade that planet, but we should be fine. We have time. We're really just trying to Walker end this war as quickly as possible because it's dragging on. All right, how is our army here doing? We have an army size of six. 
could probably wait for a few more than six. We can add a new trait to our head of research. Let's see, we can get Inquisitor level three, which increases our research speed and our research alternatives. Or we can give her an expertise. Let's give her an expertise in com computing. That sounds good. We are full up on minor artifacts. All right. Can we buy an Elgate Insight? We're still on cooldown. How much longer are we on cooldown for? 3.4 years. Okay. We'll have to try to remember in three years to buy that as soon as possible. I'd like to get in and explore those L gates. All right. Our fleet is of size eight right now. I think that is big enough to consider landing these armies on Fushru and conquering the planet. Okay, we are on our way. We'll have to remember to assign a general to this army. I think we'll go ahead and assign the Minister of Defense, who I believe is just um, commanding the recovered asset, which we don't really need to be commanded right now. If we want to have two armies long term, we might consider you know, hiring on another commander full time. Space but for the time being, we don't need to. Let's take this next perk. Let's see what this does. This is going to produce unity from our defense armies. That's pretty good. And it's going to increase the health of our defense armies. So God forbid, should anybody invade us, they're going to need a much bigger army now. Okay. Fantastic. How is bombarding this planet going? What happened to my other army? Oh, our army is embarked. Interesting. Okay. Um, let's move this army into this system and see how we're doing bombarding. We brought their garrison down to 500. Yeah, I think we'll be ready to invade by the time we get there. Research complete. We can modify our species genetics. We can get ancient driller drones. Let's see, what are these? They have a penalty to shield damage. Don't other, don't normal drones have shield penetration? So these guys do not penetrate shields. So they actually have to deal, get through shields before they can start dealing damage. But once they get through the shields, then they have 100% armor penetration and they have a bonus to hold damage. Interesting. So if we pair these with things that do a really good job of stripping shields, these could be really effective. I think let's uh, let's research that. I'd be interested in making this work as part of our fleet. All right. Our army is making it there. Once this uh, fleet um, heals up, we'll go ahead and send this fleet over to help bombard in the Vindemiatrix system. Alright, we have unlocked Energy Nexus. Let's see what we can get next. We can get level 3 point defense, or we can get jump drives. We can get code breaking plus 2. Eh, that's boring. We haven't really been doing anything with espionage in this playthrough. I find espionage is kind of not that interesting in this game. Let's get level 3 point defense. 103 months, that is a long time. Alright. Let's rendezvous these last two uh, transport armies into the lure system so they can rendezvous with the other um, army and we can hopefully invade these two planets with our other army as well. Alright, now that we've uh, occupied this system we can go ahead and conquer the rest of these systems and we have one more planet to invade and that's gonna be down here so we'll go ahead and move our actually I think we'll move this army over here and help out with um, or maybe in this this system can we take I don't think we can take on 900 but we can definitely take on 336 all right let's move this army into the Duix system. Let's give them the land armies option. 
ah, they have a hyper relay network, which is super useful for us. So we can get there and get back really quickly. All right. This army should be arriving really soon. Looks like we have some serious issues on this planet. Could probably remove a couple blockers for them. This planet uh, needs some serious attention. I think we'll build a monument, we'll build another city district, and then we'll build the gene clinics. Um, I think we can also, since we up we research this, we can upgrade our energy building on Desadia. I think this will increase the amount of building slots when we upgrade the planetary capital. So we can probably reduce the number of city planetary districts by one and increase the number of generator districts. All right, how is this invasion going? Ah, we haven't lost a single army there. That's fantastic. Fully occupied the system. So let's go ahead and let's move this army over here. Um, actually, we want to rendezvous with the no, let's move this army over into this system and let's give this fleet the order to follow this fleet. Okay, fantastic. Is this fleet fully repaired yet? Hostile station engaged. For some reason, they're not repairing at this station at all. So I think we've encountered this bug before. Let's just go ahead and move them into this system, even if they're not repaired. We can find another system to repair them in. Yeah, we're gonna need to do quite a bit of bombarding on this planet before we're ready to invade. Planetary invasion begun. All right, another planetary invasion. Okay, we've taken a couple casualties. Enemy planet secured. Yeah, we've taken one casualty. That's fine. Um, we're gonna replace most of this army with psionic um, soldiers anyways. Um, let's move this army down into this system. Um, Cause this is we have two more planets that we need to invade. It's going to be this planet and this planet, and they both have super large garrisons. Um, station engaged. Our goal is hopefully also going to be to clear. Um, invade the open wildlings. But looking at these fleet numbers, I don't think we have the power to take them on right now. It's a big maybe if we have both of our fleets fully repaired, fully updated, um, we might be able to take them on, but we need both of our fleets and we need our full attention. So we might leave the Alban Wildlings alone for this episode and maybe see to the next episode. We'll have to see. All right, let's see if we've uh, finished our cooldown. We have not. We still have 1.3 more years, okay. Good on me for remembering. All right. Research complete. Meanwhile, um, Hostile our planet should be doing okay. We've got level two auto cannons. We can get level three torpedoes. We can get level three auto cannons. Let's get level three auto cannons. Yeah, level 3 auto cannons are going to be really good for us. I'm noticing that the AI is throwing mostly corvettes and destroyers at us, which is surprising to me even later in the game, but that means torpedoes aren't going to be really all that important to us until I start seeing AI with battleships and maybe cruisers. I think torpedoes can also be decent against cruisers. Um, for those of you who are not super familiar with Stellaris, torpedoes deal like an extra damage modifier for large ships. 
So they deal pretty low damage output, um, base damage Not output, clear. but with those, you know, multipliers for larger ships, they can start dealing massive damage. Station engaged. All right. Looks like the state of Panic Sala has sent some fleets up this way. For what reason, I do not know. All right. Oh, maybe they're planning on taking this system for me. You know, if they want to do that, I won't complain. I'll just move directly into this system. Um, and actually, we'll, we'll go to this planet afterwards. Start bombarding. All right. Panic solid? Yeah. They're moving into the Avacunia system. And they're going to take it for me. 7.7k. Look at this tiny little fleet. So cute. Hostile fleet engaged. Okay. How is this planet going coming along well what happened to the garrison weren't they at like almost a thousand how do they get to 100 we can't be that effective at orbital bombardment can we well let's merge these armies and let's just invade the planet then um where is this planet here's the planet all right let's do it land armies Once we've done this, we'll go ahead and restore the commander to the MSI flagship. Because the deck collectors might come back. And when they do, we're going to want the ship to at least have a, um, a commander. So let's see. Um, which commander is this? This is Sari Jagor. So let's put Sari Jagor back here. There we go, Minister of Defense. All right, we can move this fleet probably back to Huawei to update and repair. We're almost done with this war. We can move our army probably down to Huawei as well. All right, how is bombarding this planet going? The garrison is down to 800. Let's move our army in and get ready. Yeah, we probably want to wait until they're down to under 500. Alright, we can uh, deal with some stuff on these planets as well. Um, so when we uh, create a new vassal state, they're not going to be totally, um, totally helpless. Alright. We can assign a new trait to our Minister of Defense. This is the person uh, commanding our MSI warship. So we don't really care about these traits that much because this person's not seeing that much action. We might as well take Scout. All right, I bet you we've um, we finished that cooldown. Yeah, we can discover another Elgate Insight. If we go to our Situation Log, Let's see, L cluster, we have two out of seven insights. Yeah, we're gonna need to really get on that. Okay, we get food processing centers, which increases the effectiveness of our um, agriculture districts even more. That'd be decent. Ancient nano missile cloud launcher. What's this? Okay, so they're missiles. It's a small, okay, so Damage really small, cooldown 0.85. So this fires really fast. So really low damage output, but really fast cooldown. So I think this is good for overwhelming PD. Accuracy 100% tracking, 25% damage 0 to 100. Yeah, this is actually um, pretty good. Shield penetration and armor penetration. This does straight hole damage. Okay, we'll take this for sure. We can replace all of our um, regular missiles with these. That'll be great. Hostile fleet engaged. 
All right. Can we end this war? How are we doing on this planet? Armies, 623, not just yet. We still got some work to do. Let's go ahead and enter orbit with our fleet. So we're ready. Um, I'm noticing that we are in the hole for energy credits right now. Um, we'll want to be very careful about that. My plans are, I'll, I'll let you know my plans while um, we're finishing this bombardment here. Um, I want to extend the state of Panic Sala. Uh, at the very least, I'd like to expand them out to here and encompass all this territory so they're a little bit more powerful. Um, and then I'd like to create a new vassal state that includes these systems, these systems, and these systems. Um, and I'd like to specialize the state of Panic Sala as a uh, science vassal. I can't remember what the term for that is. And I'd like to specialize this new one as a prospectorium, which is a resource collection vassal. Um, and hopefully um, that resource vassal will help us shore up our deficits on food, minerals, and energy credits. No, MSI, we will not Spaceport reconsider. Bring it on. This is just sad every time. They come at us with a tiny fleet and expect great results. Their auto cannons do a lot of damage against the shields and then just like stop when they get down to the armor. All right, there we go. Not today. All right, how are we doing on this planet? We've got to be getting close, getting near. Yeah, 53. I don't know what happens. It seems like the um, the garrison number just like drastically drops suddenly. Planetary invasion begun. All right. The Mythfell Obliterators are no more. All right, I have to grant away a bunch of territory, and um, it's a tedious process. You have to go into the diplo diplomatic um, options, offer trade deal, transfer system, and do it one or two systems at a time. So I'm not going to do this on camera. I am going to be right back. All right, and we're back. So we have created the new state of Mythfell with its capital in Kanjuklamik. Um, they have one, two, three, four, five, six systems of the planet. And we have extended the state of Panic Sala um, to include all of these territories. And now they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten planets. So the state of Panic Sala is significantly more power powerful. Um, hopefully they will be more on equal footing with us, um, but still valuable and loyal allies. Um, we do not have the influence yet to negotiate agreement and create a scholarium out of them. We need five more influence. So a couple more months and we'll be able to do this. Um, this, this new vassal is currently a prospectorium. Um, they are ex uh, permitted to expand. They're joining all of our wars. Um, we have unified sensors. Um, so hopefully they'll be pretty happy with us. Um, I think right now they're losing loyalty, but as we become more friendly and we gain more trust, I think we'll be just fine. I did decide to hold on to this system because it is producing four volatile motes, four exotic gases, and I can't quite see the crystals. Um, but I think, yeah, two rare crystals. Um, so this is a pretty valuable system. So I think we're just going to hold on to that and control it directly. Um, but yeah, this brings us down to 14 out of 15 starbase capacity, which is fantastic. Um, we can probably look into upgrading the rest of our starbases and um, building an additional one. I'd like to build out starbases in all of these three systems here. It's kind of a uh, border outpost. We're going to go one above our starbase limit, which is okay. I think the reason why we were suffering so much on our energy credits was because we were way over our limit of starbases. But now that we've brought back down to the limit, we're doing just fine. Um, and hopefully our prospectorium is also going to be providing us with plenty of minerals, energy, and food. Speaking of food, we are full up, so we might as well sell a whole bunch of those. Consumer goods likewise. And with all of that, we can buy some alloys. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and unpause the game. 
looks like we have some updating to do with our fleets. So let's go ahead and give this the upgrade order. Um, if we go into fleet management, ship design, let's see what upgrades we have. We have level two auto cannons. That's probably a big upgrade that's going into most of the fleets. I don't know if we changed much else. Uh, level two torpedoes, I think we've also researched since. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and give this the upgrade order as well. They are both at full strength, I think, so we don't need to do anything with that. Uh, meanwhile, we can look into our worlds and we can continue upgrading them. Um, while we're not at war right now, I'd also like to go into our species tab. I noticed that we have a lot of species in our empire that are not um, Valdarian. Um, and I think this is due to all the conquering and when we occupied planets, those pops may have migrated around our empire and whatnot. Um, but I'd like to restore our empire to just Nubol and um, Valdar citizens. Because um, these are the only people that we really had native to our empire. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set the species rights for all these other species um, to have them migrate out of the empire. This is going to mean that we take a hit to our economy in the short term, but once our Valdar population grows back, it'll be better for us because these are psionic pops um, and they have a bunch of bonuses that the other species do not. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change all the species rights um, and I'll be right back. All right, and we're back. Um, now this is a decision that I don't think really fits in too well with the role play for our empire. I don't think we would forcibly displace all this population. Um, but honestly, I'm just attributing that to an oversight. I really should have been um, more careful about the species rights, um, setting the default rights to migration controls enabled so they don't uh, migrate into our empire. So that was just due to negligence on my part. So we're going to just migrate them out of the empire, um, they'll move to the surrounding empires, and we'll pretend that it never happened, um, as if we had set our you know, population controls right from all along. Um, I think that's, uh, that's how we're gonna play this. Um, we can probably go ahead and merge these two armies. Um, and I'd like to transfer off all of the regular assault armies. Because um, we just want the, the psionic armies and the titanic beasts now. Um, these are going to be a lot more effective. We can probably just disband the rest of them. And at the Huawei system, we can probably build 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 more psionic armies. We can create one really big army. All right. Ships upgraded. Now that we have an upgraded fleet with 77 K power. I think we might move up and take on the Alban Wildlings. Democratic ruler election looks like our current commissary general is going to win the re-election, like always. Seems like that is always the case. There's never a surprise there. Ships upgraded. Okay, so let's go ahead and move into the Lurus system with both of our fleets. And we'll, we'll take on these wildlings. Um, and then we can prepare for war with the Alliance in the next episode. I think we probably have enough, while we're waiting, we probably have enough influence to negotiate our agreement with the state of Panic Salat. Let's just make sure we have these set to what we want. Integration prohibited, restricted voting, expansion permitted. They're giving us research. They're gonna join all of our conflicts now and we'll have unified sensors. We need 338. Okay, wow. We need a lot more influence than I thought. It said uh, 215 or something before because I had forgotten to adjust these other parameters. Okay, so we're still a little while off from that, but we're not too far. Um, all right, do we have both of our fleets here already? Wow, that was quick. All right, we'll move both of these fleets in. I think we'll unrestrict these systems. And Pray to God that this doesn't go horribly. We may not be ready for this, but we're just gonna we're just gonna do it and see what happens. All right. You know, it may be worth. Let's actually. Um, it's too late. 
I was gonna say, let's move our MSI warship in as well to support, but it's too late. Hostile station engaged. All right. Let's actually, I want to watch this battle. This is probably the most formidable battle we've had. Our commander passed away. That's really not good. In the middle of a battle, one of our fleets no longer has a commander. All right. Looks like we're handling this uh, confrontation pretty well. We haven't taken any casualties yet. Okay, we've completely destroyed one of their fleets. We've taken out one of their stations. We're taking out their main station here. Looks like this fleet still um, needs to be taken care of. I'm curious, are they going to move in their other fleets to Space take us on, or are they just going to stay parked in their system? Looks like they're just going to stay parked. We can upgrade our Lord High Admiral. Um, this is our army general. Let's give this army damage plus 10. Yeah. Or army health plus 25. Let's give army damage. We already have this trait, hardiness. So let's give us the opportunity to upgrade them both. All right, so this is a really big ship, ship, a galleon. So hopefully our torpedoes are doing good work against this ship. Yeah, I don't know why all our ships are out and around, not focusing on the galleon. There we go. All right, so we have done this all without taking a single casualty. That's great. Let's go back, rest and repair. Okay, let's move all these to the lure system. Research complete. All right, two more systems to go. We have unlocked the special missiles. That's pretty good. What is a paradise dome? Interesting. Housing and amenities. This must be the housing building option. We well, don't really need to use those. I never understood the point of those. Um, we can get off-world trading company, boring, we can get tile blockers, honestly, it's probably worth just getting the tile blockers. Alright, we can bump this up to normal speed, we've watched one of the battles, we've watched all of the battles. Um, we're gonna need to hire on a new commander, so let's see what our options are. We can get ship hull points plus 15%, we get ship's weapons range plus 15%. All right, we have two prudence officers. We'll probably take the 27 year old because of how young they are. That means they're going to last us a long time. Yeah, let's take this commander, this 27 year old with prudence. And let's see what else we can get. We can get prudence level two. We can get trickster. And we can give this person the admiral specialty. All right. Now, the commander that died was not sitting on our government. Okay, correct. So, once we are fully repaired here, we should be good to go and uh, fight the next installment. Looks like um, we can probably spend some more alloys. Do we want to build another fleet? I don't know if we have the energy for it. Um, I think what we'll continue to do is just continue to spend our alloys upgrading these stations and let's start building some uh, actual defenses here. So we're going to want uh, probably three hangar bays, two gun batteries, and a torpedo battery. I clicked three gun batteries and a torpedo battery. And we're going to want target uplink, communications jammer, and a disruption field generator. Alright, we'll do the same thing here. We'll do three hangar bays, two gun batteries, and a torpedo battery. And we will get the target uplink, communications jammer, and disruption field generator. All right, so these two L gates should be pretty well fortified now. Um, once these continue upgrading, we will go ahead and build a bunch of 
um, naval naval yards available. there. Anchorages, I think they're called, to increase our naval capacity. All right. Have we fully repaired? Looks like we are slowly but surely repairing. How come this um this ship is not repairing either? Something's off with the starbase. It's having a lot of trouble with repairs. You know, that's fine. We'll just move in to the next fleet. Uh, to the next system. Um, let's see. What's going on in this system? We can probably take this system. This is going to be a little bit more challenging, this one. Construction complete. All right. Looks like we finished construction on all of these. So let's go ahead and build a bunch of anchorages. Hostile station engaged. Module slot already has queue construction. All right. Council so we are building ready. a bunch of anchorages there. Let's build a bunch of anchorages here. Okay. Let's build a bunch of anchorages here as well. I think these are the best thing to include on our systems that are not uh, shipyards or defensive. All right, we can get plus 20 stability on all our planets. That's fantastic. Um, and let's get a bonus to our specialist app, uh, pops. All right, how is the engagement going in this system? It's going decently. We might take a few more casualties than last time. So we have our MSI warship in to support this time, which will be a big help. Oh wow, we made quick work. We made real quick work of them. We did take a couple casualties though. Yeah, it looks like we took a cruiser casualty here and we took a destroyer casualty in this fleet. All right, let's um, let's move these guys into the Fairness Black Hole system. I really want to repair in between each of these because I think this is going to be the toughest nut to crack. Yeah, this is definitely going to be the toughest nut to crack. Cloaked fleets discovered in the Ophiel system. Interesting. All right, we can finish the unyielding tree. While in a defensive war with another empire, ship build speed is increased by 33%. Okay, so this is good for like reinforcing our fleets in a defensive war. Ship fire rate is also increased by 15% with for ships within your borders. Okay, this will help us with the crisis, I'm sure. I'm sure we're gonna be in a defensive war against them and I'm sure we're gonna benefit from that plus 15% damage inside our borders. Um, and we have one more Ascension perk to take. Um, I'm not gonna choose this in this episode. I'm actually gonna let you guys let me know in the comments what you think the best option is. Um, we could take something like Defender of the Galaxy, which improves our damage output to um, the end game crises, which might help us a lot. Um, we could take Grasp the Void, which increases our starbase capacity by five more than we already have. We could take Eternal Vigilance, which increases the damage and hull points and re um, re reliability of all of our starbases. We could take Galactic Contender, which increases our diplomatic weight and damage to the Fallen Empires if we want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Executive Vigor could let us actually play around with some different edicts. I think we've been on the same edict this entire time, but with 100 extra edicts fund, we could do a lot. Um, we could reduce our empire size from planets with Imperial Prerogative, Transcendent Learning. Uh, no, let's not even consider this one. The Shared Destiny, I think, would increase the loyalty that we have from our subjects. So we could have more subjects um, with less penalty. So let me know what you guys think in the comments, what your favorite Ascension perks are and what you think we should do for this playthrough. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and end the episode here. I know we have not finished off the Open Wildlings, but we will do it first thing next time. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you then.